Hey, what's up, everyone? Welcome back. Uh, we got the the balls deep your uh, DFS football podcast going on. Uh, new and improved starting this week. Um, got my boy here, Patrick Makowski, going to be joining me. A um, little, little bit of background information on me and Pat. Um, we both like to send each other uh, Brokeback Mountain gifts. That's kind of something that we enjoy. Uh, balls and wieners, Dave. Balls, balls and wieners. See, balls and wieners. Speaking of balls and wieners, um, <laughs> you know, we're, we're very proud of our, our pitching and catching uh, days back in high school. So that's a little bit longer than we probably want to admit um, ago. <laughs> but, hey, whatever. I mean, it is what it is, man. Um, basically, just kind of here to – Try to entertain you a little bit, uh, drop a little bit of DFS knowledge, hopefully good DFS knowledge, um, and kind of help you guys build up your bankrolls a little bit so you can talk shit to all the asshole friends that you guys have. So uh, welcome to the uh, podcast, Mr. Mikowski. Well, I appreciate the opportunity to get to spend my Wednesday evenings with you, David. I got to tell you, I'm jealous. <laughs> I, I wish that I had the same opportunity i'm stuck looking at your ugly face um but you know that's all right you gotta look at my ugly face so i guess we're even maybe yeah we'll call it even for tonight anyways i would say the only difference between us is i'm not wearing a stupid shirt um and i don't know if you want to explain to you know the the tens of people listening about the the dumb shirt that you're wearing yeah so here here's the thing uh i got a guy that works for me he's originally from the south huge alabama crimson tide fan how many, uh, how many teeth does he have? Uh, I think six. Six, okay. Uh, four of them, I believe, are real. Oh, fair uh, enough. So uh, we'll call it that. Uh, but, yeah, so I do anything I can to get underneath this guy's skin. Uh, so I went out and bought myself a Clemson hoodie last year before the big game and wore it into work that Friday. And, well, that paid off uh, for me. And we got another big game this weekend with uh, – LSU meeting up with the Crimson Tide, so I ordered my hoodie last uh, tonight, so I should have it tomorrow for Friday's work day uh, to hopefully get in his goat a little bit as well. So, well, I whatever you, I can do. Let Let me be the first to say that I think you're going to look just absolutely stunning in that LSU um, sweatshirt, <laughs> and and I hope you take me some selfies um, so so that I can make that the background on my phone. Yeah, it's not far off from the Mason Blue, which yeah. is what I really like, so it's close. Yeah, okay. I'm good with that, bud. I'm good with that. So, uh, you kind of ready to get into this there, Pat? Yeah, that's rock and roll, buddy. All right, bud. So, so let's start off um, let's start off with core plays. So, core plays um, for us, basically, what we're talking about is um, GPP tournaments, so uh, guaranteed prize pool. So we're talking about, you know, the big boys, you know, um, I do a lot of 20 max tournaments personally. Um, so in a given week, you know, I've got anywhere from, I don't know, hundred to about 150 different lineups that I put in, um, a little bit different than what Pat's style is. I'll let Pat tell you about his style here in a minute. Um, but so I'm looking at guys that I'm going to roster, you know, I don't know, somewhere in the 75% neighborhood. So, you know, I would consider that um, you know, exposure is the term that I would use. So I'd say that I have, you know, 75% exposure to these guys. So, um, first guy for me, um, you know, I might even have him at a hundred percent of lineups this week. Um, maybe not. We'll, we'll kind of see how things shake out, but, um, my, my boy Cooper cup, um, you know, $7,300 this week. Um, he doesn't have to, to deal with Brandon cooks, um, still on any targets this week. And so, you know, that passing attack, uh, it's going to be a little bit more lean towards um, Cup than I think that we're used to. And he definitely has been getting his fair share, you know, even with all the targets um, that they've had on the field. And if you don't know already, um, Pittsburgh is just notorious for getting torn up by slot receivers. And I don't know that you could, you know, pick a better slot receiver in the game right now than, than Cup anyways. So I think that Cup at 7,300 um, is, is a pretty good bet to have – a massive game. Um, I I think he could easily finish um, that week as the number one wide receiver. So uh, I'm going with him. And then the other guy I'm going to go with is uh, I'm going to go with Lamar Jackson. I don't know necessarily that I'm going to get all the way up to 75% exposure on him just because there's three other quarterbacks this week that I really like. Um, I, I mean, I really like Jameis this week. I really like Drew Brees this week. And then I'll get to, um, a pivot play a little bit later on another guy that I like, but man, Lamar Jackson is 
he, he seems like we talk about like, or I talk about wide receivers being matchup proof, um, you know, every now and again. And I think Lamar Jackson is, is a matchup proof quarterback. Um, if he doesn't beat you in the air, he's going to beat you on the ground. Um, he tends to beat people in both. So playing against an absolutely disgusting Cincinnati team, uh, which has a defense probably worse than their city smells. Um, I, I don't know how you're going to sit Lamar Jackson and, you know, take him out of your lineups totally. So he's probably going to be closer to 50 or 60% exposure for me this week. I, I just can't imagine not getting as much Lamar Jackson as I can handle. Um, what say you there, Pat? Yeah, uh, I agree with that city really stinking uh, Cincinnati. Uh, but, yeah, you know, for me, kind of my my thing is I, I only do about 10, 15 lineups. Uh, I run it out there in maybe 20 to 30 tournaments. Um, so I'm not nearly as crazy uh, when it when it comes to what you do on a weekly basis. Uh, but I, I'm with you on the Baltimore-Cincinnati matchup. You know, I got Mark Ingram in every single lineup that I'm rolling out there this week. There are, the, the Bengals are just horrible against the run. Uh, Ingram is going to get his touches, uh, at least 15, probably close to 20 touches, uh, 120 yards on the ground, at least a score, maybe two, uh, going to rack them up pretty early. Um, and it, it, there's a couple of wide receivers that I really like. I'm rolling out in probably 60 to 70% of the lineups this week. Uh, Devonte Adams, Green Bay, uh, you know, 6,900 bucks this week. He's healthy. Rogers is going to be looking for him. Uh, I, at least a dozen targets, probably get 10 catches, 120 yards, a score or two um, against the Carolina defense. That's been pretty subpar against the pass this year. Um, and, and the guy that I really like a lot is Christian Kirk, Arizona, 5,200 bucks for this guy this week against a matchup with the Buccaneers that I don't know whose past defense is worse, whether it's Tampa's or Arizona's. Um, so uh, he's going to get a ton of targets. There's going to be a lot of balls thrown around during this game. And when we're talking about balls, we've already established how well I am and how familiar I am with balls. You're, you're so. very familiar with balls, and, and I can I can say from personal experience that you're very good at handling them. <laughs> so, so I know my balls, right? And, and there's going to be a ton of passes thrown in this game, a lot of yards. I'm, I'm with you with the Jameis Winston, too. Drew Brees, I like him as well. Where I'm not with you is the Lamar Jackson pick. You know, he's, well, he's that, one that's of them. Well, that's because you're as dumb as you're ugly, Pat. Yeah, yeah, I get it. You know, this is this is my fade this week. The dude's been absolutely lights out, worldly. He hasn't missed a beat the entire season. This matchup is perfect for him to go out and go off again. And I just I'm going with my gut on this, and I'm saying that Cincinnati that's, that's just kind of big gut that you're going with. It is, it is. It's grown quite large since. Uh, it's hard, our not, to, it's hard not to trust the gut that big, actually. <laughs> yeah, you, you, yeah you, you know that point alone might just talk me out of it. I get it, I get it. That's what I'm trying to do, Dave. I'm trying to help you out here, but I, I'm just gonna go with it and say it. Cincinnati figures out a way to slow him down, and he comes back down to earth for one game, just one. All right, this so, is it. So okay, so so you're telling me that you don't like Lamar Jackson, and just you're you're going on a slow metabolism is is your reason for for that. So let me let me spit out a little bit of fact for you then, um, for for why Mark Ingram is a guy that I'm not going to touch. Okay, so Mark Ingram in the last two weeks has gotten thirteen and seventeen touches. Okay, he is going to face a defense that that sucks like we talked about. Um, and he's been getting about 60% of that share in the backfield with Edwards. Now you throw Lamar Jackson into the mix, who, you know, is on, the, is on pace to set the all-time record for, for quarterback rushing yards. And I look at Mark Ingram and I say, if, if that dude doesn't score two touchdowns, then, you know, he's not worth his price. So he's at 7,100 right now. Um, one thing that I like to talk about is um, guys that are going to hit um, what I call as 4X. So basically, four X is is kind of based on their salary. So if you know Mark Ingram's at seventy one hundred, you know you you take that down to seven point one. Um, four times that would be twenty eight point four. 
So if Mark Ingram isn't looking at getting, you know, 28.4 points, he's not a guy that I'm super big on. Do you want to guess how many times this, this year Mark Ingram has scored more than 28.4 points, Pat? I'm going to go with probably zero, considering you're making it a point, Dave. Uh, he, he has done it one time. He did it, okay. against, he did it against Kansas City. And like I said, touchdown dependent. So he had three of his seven touchdowns that week against uh, KC. So let's see. Over the last one, two, three, four, five weeks since then, he's been averaging right around. I'm just doing a little math in my head. I'm going to say he's averaging right around about 15 points. So anything more than about six grand for Mark Ingram is the guy that you know I'm not I'm not going to touch. So I just think that they have too many too many guys that can run the ball there. Um, Gus Edwards has slowly been kind of eating away at his share a little bit. So on paper, I could see somebody liking Mark Ingram, but I think you look a little deeper into it, and that's a dude that I wouldn't touch with your balls, Pat. Well, that's you know they're my balls, I guess. So. Uh, I, I see what you're saying, but it's going to it's gonna get out of hand early. And they're going to move the ball down the field. He's going to get goal line touches early on. He's going to get two scores we, we'll first see. half. We'll see. Gus Edwards got goal line touches against New England. Yeah, he's one of the sneaky guys you got to watch out for this week too because, uh, you, you know, Ingram, that game gets uh, out of control early. Edwards is going to get extra touches. So you're talking north of 10 at least. So what about um, some kind of chalky guys, some some high high ownership guys that that you're going to go ahead and stay away from this week? Yeah, I mean, for for me, like I said, it's it's Lamar Jackson, and I was I was thinking Travis Kelsey, uh, and that's if you know Mahomes isn't back. Um, now, just so you know, Mahomes did have a full practice today, so he likely is going to be back. Yeah, so then then I'm not gonna I'm not gonna pull Kelsey out of the lineup with Mahomes in there. Uh, he's uh, the Titans have been pretty stingy. Yeah, I don't know. I, it's gonna be interesting for me. I, I might still stay away from him uh, just just because of uh, how well that Titans defense has been against tight ends the last couple of weeks. Um, yeah, you know, what, what about you? What are you doing? Well, let me go back to Kelsey real quick because Kelsey is the the top tight end on the slate. Um, by quite a bit he's the next closest guy is Hooper um, $900 cheaper Um, the one thing I'll say about Kelsey is even with even with um, Mahomes being out he really hasn't dropped off too much Um, he's been right around 15 points um, a week with um, without uh, Mahomes and he's eight targets eight targets nine targets so I mean he's he's pretty much been the same um, he actually has 666 yards on the season. So if any reason you want to fade him, it's because of that yardage total. Um, so for me personally, um, you know, I think that DFS quite obviously is a lot about matchups. Um, and so when I'm looking at matchups, um, one of the more obvious ones is, you know, wide receiver cornerback matchups. And so both of my fades this week are on guys that, are fucking all pro receivers and I would, you know, do a lot of things that are illegal in quite a few states to get them on my lions. Um, <laughs> but, um, you know, it's just, I don't think that they're worth their value this week. So um, the first one's probably one that I, you know, don't think is very, a very big secret. Um, Mike Evans. So Mike Evans is going to be shadowed by Patrick Peterson. Uh, you know, Patrick Peterson's one of the best cover corners in the game period. I know Mike Evans is, you know, absolutely on fire right now. Um, and I know that he's, you know, top tier receiver, but I just can't see spending $7,600 whenever they've got, you know, Godwin to throw the ball to as well. And Godwin won't have Patrick Peterson on him. So I'm going to probably not touch Evans at all. Julio Jones is kind of in a similar situation. Um, I don't know if Matt Ryan or Matt Schaub is going to throw him the ball. Um, if it's Matt Schaub, I think that's enough said. If it's Matt Ryan, it's not going to be a healthy Matt Ryan. And he still has other guys to throw the ball to. He's got the Alabama boy, Calvin Ridley. Um, he's got Hooper to throw the ball to. Devontae Freeman all of a sudden is, you know, catching balls and, um, you know, doing his best, you know, Patrick Mikowski impression and just getting his hands on as many balls as he can. So, you know, Lattimore has, has not usually gotten the best of Jones in his career. Jones is... Um, I wouldn't say had his way, but Jones has had reasonably good games against him. 
but at $7,500, it's kind of the same thing as Evans. I wouldn't be shocked if either one of those two guys, you know, put up a, you know, 100 yards and got a touch. But at that value, um, I think I'm just going to shy away from him. So, we so do, are, go ahead. yeah, are you are you going to go? Are you going to go Godwin then? Yeah. I, I mean, who, is that who you're going to roll with in that game? Because there's yep. going to be a lot of yards through the air. Yep. So um, I'll talk about. Um, I mean, I, I guess I can get into Godwin a little bit. So, so when we start talking about top pivots of the week, um, Godwin is going to just simply be a guy that I'm going to pivot off of Evans. Uh, if they weren't playing, you know, a team with a what I consider a lockdown corner, I would go with Evans again this week. Um, but, but just you know, because of that, and on top of the fact that you know, I think that Godwin's a, at least a top ten receiver in DFS, anyways. Um, I don't feel bad at all spending $200 less on Godwin and not having to worry about Patrick Peterson. So the only problem with that is, you know, I think that both Evans and Godwin are going to be very highly owned just because they're, they're so obvious, um, you know, plays against, you know, their, their, their matchups this week that I don't necessarily know that, you know, either one of them is going to be, you know, anything more than a chalk play, but um, I'm going to avoid Evans. I'm going to go with Godwin. Now, the other side of that coin for me, as far as um, a pivot is concerned, is going to be Kyler Murray. So I said that I'm going to own a, a shitload of uh, Lamar Jackson. Um, I also really like Winston. I really like Breeze this week. And I think that everyone's going to be on that same boat. So I actually think Kyler Murray is, is a nice little pivot play that he'll probably be my second highest owned quarterback. It might only have, I don't know, you know, 15, 12% exposure to him. But, you know, what I, I really like starting, you know, receivers and, and, and quarterbacks and tight ends against Tampa Bay because they do a pretty good job of stopping that run. So you kind of have to throw against them, and they're really easy to throw against anyways. So, you know, if, if Murray can go out there and, and have a game that's even – remotely similar to the other three guys that I just mentioned, um, you're going to be in pretty good shape. And so, yeah, and I think he's got, he's got uh, Johnson coming back this week, I think too, uh, from what I saw. Yeah. But I mean, so, I don't know. I don't, I don't see them having, you know, a good day on the ground. If anything, you know, Murray is going to be the most effective guy on the ground because when he runs, it's going to be, it's not going to be planned. It's going to be, you know, him scrambling. So, you know, th that's not what the Tampa Bay defense is good against. So, um, I, I could see Murray having a, you know, being a poor man's Lamar Jackson this week. So wh what about you, Pat? What kind of uh, pivot plays are you looking at this week? Yeah, you know what? I, I, I like Kelvin Ridley. I mean, you mentioned him a little bit earlier. Um, he's, he's gone off. Uh, New Orleans is his favorite matchup last year. He, his showing out party was in New Orleans, 146 yards through the air, three touchdowns. Second game against him, 93 yards, a touchdown. I mean, the kid just likes to play against the Saints. Uh, who I really like this week, though, is Jamal Williams, Green Bay. Uh, 5200 bucks to own this guy. He, you know, you got against Carolina, shared backfield with Aaron Jones. But Jones is 7400 You take a look at these guys in comparison uh, the last four weeks, and Williams is actually outscoring Jones. And that's with a 44-point for a 44 point game from Jones um, two weeks ago. So as far as consistency goes, uh, you know, Williams hasn't had a week in the last four where he scored less than 13 points. And Jones has had two where he scored less than 13 points, eight and three. Uh, so when it's about the bank for the buck, man, 5,200 for me, uh, you know, it, you're, you're looking at a floor of maybe three X. It's not four, which is what we're shooting for. But to, to own Jamal Williams, I mean, for me, that's that's where I'm going to roll with. So, Yeah, 5,200 uh, isn't, isn't bad. If you look at the guys that are around him in that price range, I, I, would, I would personally argue that, um, and I'm not saying I don't like the Jamal Williams. Um, it, he's more of a, I think he's more of a cash game play than a GPP play, just because I don't see him having a 30 <laughs> you know, a 30, 40 point day. I don't think that's a ceiling. Um, for a hundred dollars more, you can get Dave Montgomery against a piece of shit fucking Lions defense. Um, <laughs> you know, for, for even a hundred dollars less, you can get Devontae Freeman. 
Um, for two hundred dollars less, you can get Devin Singletary, who I'll talk about a little bit later. Um, but yeah, in a, in a you know, in just a cash lineup, if you want to save some coin, um, I can see Jamal Williams. Um, I, I I can totally see that man. Um, so let's see. So we get down next. What about contrarian plays? So guys that you know you are going to have some exposure to that you think are going to be fairly low owned. Yeah, you know, as we have been talking about, there's a ton of good quarterbacks that you can roll out there this week. Um, and, and I got a guy that I think is gonna is gonna have a pretty solid game this weekend, going against Kansas City. Uh, and if you need to save a little bit of coin somewhere, you know, to to run a McCaffrey or something into your lineup, uh, I, I like Ryan Tannehill uh, going against Kansas City. Mahomes is back. Uh, practicing, so we're assuming he's going to be ready to go. They're going to put up a ton of points. Tennessee is going to be playing from behind. Tannehill is going to sling it around probably 30, 35 times again. Uh, in his three starts this year, you know, talking 24 points a game out of the guy. So I, I can easily see 300 yards, at least two, maybe three scores, just because of how much he's got to throw the ball around. I'll tell so, you what, man. I, I, would, I would love – nothing more than to sit here and, and tell you how much I hate your Tannehill pick. But, um, I mean, I'll, I'll say two things. So, so first of all, one rule that I kind of have in DFS is the only position I don't fuck around with is quarterback. So I, you know, just, just on just my, my own brain thinking, I, I would hear T- Tannehill and I'd say, I'd say, Jesus Christ, Pat, why, why would I ask you to call host a show? If you're going to come out here and tell me that Ryan Tannehill is going to be, a guy that you're going to think about playing. But to your point, the, you know, the last three weeks, he's basically averaged 23 points a game throwing the ball. If you were to spread that out a little bit further, and those 23 points would basically be a top five quarterback in DFS. He's got a pretty good matchup. Um, I don't know that I would play Tannehill personally just because there are so many other quarterbacks that I like, and I, I think I would – I would rather play Murray um, if I had to not play one of the three. But, man, I tell you, I was ready to rip your ass about Tannehill, but when I look into it, it's it's not bad numbers-wise. Um, so, no, I, I, I think that's a, that's a good one, man. Um, now, yeah, that hits, the, that hits the 4X mark, too. Oh, yeah. I mean, we're, we're 5,100 points, mm-hmm. you know. Yep. Uh, 5,100, he gets 20 points. We're there. Yeah, he easily could get – get more than that so no no I, I think that's I, I think that's fine I don't know about 303 touchdowns but um you know I could see 275 and two hey, that's still pretty I mean, solid yeah. for for the investment right mm-hmm. I agree um the only thing you'd have to be really worried about is you know the best player in that team is Derrick Henry and Kansas City sucks against the run yeah unfortunately if that game is relatively close and you know Derrick Henry has a 150 yard day he's due that that Which could, he hasn't had yet this year, right? And so that could screw coming. that play. But um, Tannehill is is actually kind of clever. Um, I, I could see putting him into just maybe a, a tournament or two that are maybe single entries that aren't very much money. Where I'm just saying, you know what, I'm going to get goofy and I'm just going to see what happens. You know, um, for me, when it comes to contrarian plays, it's kind of hard on a, on a Wednesday, um, the night that we record this, to 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 pretty much tell you the guys that, you know, guy or guys that I'm going to play. Because to me, a lot of that ends up coming down to, you know, injuries and stuff. So one guy for me is for that exact reason is Albert Wilson. Um, Preston Williams is on the IR now. So Albert Wilson slides into the number two spot um, on a team that probably is going to be throwing the ball like crazy, um, like they usually do. Um, I mean, Mark Walton is out now for the week as well. So, I mean, that limits that running game even further. They're going to have, you know, grocery baggers from Kroger, you know, starting in their backfield. So that's going to give them all the reason in the world to have to throw the ball. Uh, <clears throat> and so Albert Wilson at $3,300, you know, if you want to get your four X, it doesn't take much. Um, he needs basically four catches for, you know, 40 yards and a touch and you got it. If he gets six catches for 75 yards and doesn't even hit the end zone, You've got it. Those numbers are very attainable. Um, so Albert Wilson's a guy that I like for 3,300. And then a guy that I probably should have spoke up more about last week, um, and I didn't, 
uh, was Devin Singletary. Um, as I looked more into things come Saturday, um, Saturday night, Sunday morning, I went from 0% exposure to Devin Singletary up to about 30% um, because I thought he would do or thought he could do similar to what he ended up doing. I didn't think he would quite quite get to the level that he did last week, but um, that's kind of what we've been looking to see from him, um, and we and we finally did see it. So he's a guy that, again, I think this week um, could make a hell of a lot of sense. Um, he's only at 5,000. And I can see him kind of now supplanting Gore for the most part. Um, I could see a close game against Cleveland for sure. Um, so I could see them, you know, feeding him the rock a lot. He had 20 carries for basically 100 yards in the touch last week. And he, he caught three balls for almost 50 yards. So if he does, if he does that again, he, he's more than 4x. And I think his upside um, is even more than that. So um, let's hit on some what we call dart throws. So... So a dart throw to me, um, it's kind of like a lottery ticket. So a guy that you know you're you're not you know you're not just putting names in a hat and you know picking out some asshole. Um, you know you know you have a little bit of thought into it, but it's a guy that you know really no one's no one's touching. Um, so Pat, why don't you go ahead and, and give me one, and then I want to talk about my two guys. All right, so you know for me, I, I'm gonna roll kicker uh, for the Cleveland Browns, Kareem Hunt. Uh, he comes back from his suspension for. It, t- it uh, took me a second to get get your job. <laughs> I'm like, kicker, what uh, the fuck? Oh, yeah, kicker. Yeah, yeah, he's kicking for the Browns, uh, and I think uh, uh, you know. Let's face it, all the stupid commercials this year, all the shit talking that the Browns have done about how good they're going to be, they've literally had one guy to show up to play every single week, and that's been Nick Chubb. Uh, so for me, uh, you know, Freddie's tired of getting fingered. You know, why wouldn't he fucking roll this dual bag out, hand him the ball 10, 12 times uh, just to see what happens, maybe spark that freaking offense a little bit, get something going. Uh, you know, I, Kareem Hunt, man, uh, first game back, the guy has got talent. He's got ability, and the Browns just have nothing else going for him. So Freddie Kittens, you know, needs to just – Turn around and hand it to him ten times and see what the fuck happens. And for three grand, why not? No, yeah, I can see that. I mean, you know, four X gets you at twelve points. That that's a you know, he breaks off a fifty five yard touchdown run, boom, there's your twelve points. Um it, I don't know that I'm gonna trust Kareem Hunt enough to actually play him personally, but <laughs> anyone who does, I don't I don't blame a man. Three thousand dollars, um for, for a guy that has at least all pro talent on the field, I, I can see it. Um, I mean, Freddie Kitchens, for as, as stupid as he is, um, probably the next Lions head coach, knowing their, knowing their stupidity. Um, you know, he, he said that, hey, um, Kareem Hunt's back, and, and he's going to have a role in that offense. So, you know, if you give him 10 touches, he, he could change the game at 10 touches. Um, so, no, I, I think that's a fine pick. Um, now my two picks are going to kind of go back to, you know, the game that we talked about earlier, um, you know, the, the, the Tampa Bay game. So, um, one thing that, one thing that I think that, that people tend to forget just because, you know, Arizona has been so burnt on the past this year is that, you know, Arizona is also absolutely terrible against the run. Um, and so if you want to go, you know, very contrarian, I think, um, and and throw a dart at the same time. Um, Ronald Jones has taken over that backfield in Tampa Bay. Um, you know, dude's got 30 carries over the last two weeks, um, and he's kind of you know taken that that backfield from from Peyton Barber. So if you want to kind of go a little against the grain there and say, you know what, I'm gonna pass on on the big money from from Winston and from Evans and from Godwin, and I'm going to pour $4,300 on a Ronald Jones fire um, and see what happens. I mean, I, I think that's a little sneaky. Um, you know, you're looking to get 16 points out of him, which is exactly what he had last week. Um, so I think that makes sense. And then the other one, you've got to have some serious fucking testicles um, to, to play O.J. Howard at this point. But, I mean... That's such a good matchup. Um, 
if he was injured and not playing, I, I would be saying the same thing right now about Cameron Brait. But at $3,300, talent-wise, you get one of the best tight ends in football. I know that he's not fully healthy, but you know I, I always say um, on the Last Call podcast for Fantasy Six Pack, I always talk about you know guys that have kind of you know breakout opportunities sometimes out of nowhere because of injury. I always say that you know in the NFL these guys are all so talented that you know it really just it really just takes opportunities sometimes for a guy to go off. And you know OJ Howard has definitely got the talent. He very well may get an opportunity. Um, you know, this week, especially if Bright is, you know, if Bright doesn't play especially. But, again, if you want to shy away from, you know, Evans and Godwin, I mean, who's who who's really going to say that, you know, it'd be absolutely just beyond the realm of possibility that O.J. Howard gets 100, 100 yards and two touches? I yeah, mean, and fully capable, big athletic tight end. I mean. And where, where did he go to school, Patrick? I can't remember. I'm not sure, Dave. Uh, was it was it in, incest incest ridden Alabama? Yeah, I I, I think hey, so. Yeah. Let, let's start an all Alabama lineup. This oh week. Jesus! What do you say? We can, we can try that. We can try that. We can try that. We can give that a whirl. We're gonna have to think on it a little bit. But you know, <laughs> um, the OJ Howard is actually a guy that I think I'm going to own a lot in. Um, I could easily see 50 percent exposure to him. And that could be absolutely fucking batshit crazy on my part. But if I'm looking at tight ends this week, I mean, sure, Kelsey is always pretty good, but he's at 6,400. Hooper, I just, I don't know. I'm just, I'm hesitant um, because I think that New Orleans defense is twice as good as anyone gives them credit for. So I could could see him having a problem. As much Lamar Jackson as I'm going to have, I'm not touching Mark Andrews this week. Um, Braden Cooks being out, I could argue that um, Gerald Everett's a pretty good play, but at, at 4,500, I would rather play Andrews or I'd rather play Howard at the, the 33. And then after that, there, there's nobody um, except for. What do, you, my, what, do you, what do you think on Janu? Oh, Janu, I th- it's kind of looking like Delaney didn't practice today. So John is going to get rolled out there again. He's right around the same. Uh, what was he at? He's at thirty five hundred for the week. So he he's fine. I think he's going to be way chalkier. Um, I mean, the ownership of of, of Johnny Smith is probably going to be I don't know ten times what OJ Howard's going to be. I mean, I could see Johnny Smith being ten fifteen percent owned, and I could see you know Howard being around one and a half two percent maybe. So it's kind okay. of it's kind of more of a like it's the same thing with the Ronald Jones. It's kind of more of a contrarian and a dart throw all at the same time, um, and I, and I like doing shit like that. Uh, yeah, I, I, I'm kind of leaning Mike Jacecki a little bit too for the same reasons that you got Wilson going into a lineup. You know, yeah, he, yep, yep, that's it, a good one. Fitz, Fitz is losing you know some targets, and and Jacecki's been pretty decent the last few weeks. So yeah, I'll give you I kind of like I like him at 3100 this week with a matchup against Indy. But, I mean, there, there's so many ways that you can look at, at putting a lineup together. And, you know, normally I wouldn't I wouldn't touch O.J. Howard e- even in this spot because um, there's no guarantee that a tight end is going to do, do great against Arizona. Um, Evan Ingram had one catch for six yards against Arizona. I mean, wow, yeah. You know, so it's, it's not a guarantee. Um, but there's just – there's really nobody at tight end this week that I'm like, oh yeah, I, I just I have, have, have to one. start him. Yeah. Nope. So OJ Howard's probably going to be a spot where I'm going to, you know, save money. I'm going to have him in quite a few lineups, and that's going to allow me to pay up for for other guys. Um, the only other guy that we didn't really talk about that I want to just mention real quick, just so that I get credit for it later, is uh, um, I want to talk about Dave Montgomery. Um, the Lions defense, as I said, is is stupid. I mean, I, I could easily go go start at linebacker for them, um, and I'd at least have average speed. Um, but he, he's basically That's averaged 25 okay. points, 20 carries. Um, the last few weeks, he gets a little bit involved in the backfield. I, I think that that Lions-Bears game is going to be very low scoring. I could see, fuck, man, 14-17, 17-20, something like that. So 
Um, you're not going to get a bunch of touchdowns out of that guy, but I could see him going for a bunch of yards, getting a bunch of carries. Um, and at 5,300, I think he's another guy that I'm probably going to slip in there um, and have quite a bit of exposure to. So when I'm throwing Howard and I'm throwing Montgomery into those lineups, God, heaven forbid, I throw Devin Singletary in there as well, and I can have I can have my pick of, of the litter at, at wide receiver um, yep. and, and at quarterback. So just some things to think about. Um, we'll, we'll see. We'll, we'll look back at it, you know, here. In, yeah, I like the week. Montgomery. He's, he's uh, the last few weeks really taken over that backfield. You know, there's always been Cohen kind of hanging out in the wings a little bit, and I think he's definitely uh, – He's taking the reins on that. He's going to get a ton of a ton of work this weekend yeah, against he, a lot. Yeah, he definitely should. Um, I mean, Mike Davis hit a who people thought were going to get carries early on. Basically, hasn't touched the ball this year. Um, I mean, Tree Cohen is obviously more of a, a more of a pass catcher, so he's your third down back. Um, I just think that's going to be a really low scoring game. Lions defense is terrible. Mitchell Trubisky plays like a fucking high school quarterback, um, so you don't have to worry about him. Um, and I don't think that the Lions are good enough on defense to do what a normal team would do and say, hey, I'm going to stack the box. Dave Montgomery's not beating me. You're going to have to beat me with Trubisky. I'm going to put Slay on Allen Robinson. Yeah. Good luck. They're, they're too stupid to, to do that. So um, so I think I think he's got a, a, good, a good play. I just didn't have a real good spot to put him in the lineup there. So um, anything else you want to throw in there, Pat? No, man, I'm I'm pretty much, like I said, if you can figure out a way to get Christian McCaffrey in your lineup, though, it, it, Green Bay is stupid horrible against running backs. I, and this dude is, like, literally the best running back on the planet. I mean, his, his floor has got to be 35 points. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know about that, but um, uh, but you're not that far off. You're, you're not that far off. I mean, I'm telling you. <laughs> He's good for it every single week. You know he's going to get yards. You know he's going to put it in the end zone. So, so CMC, man, I'm telling you. Yeah, so so my, my thoughts real quick on McCaffrey. Um, you know, I, I do, of the 100 and whatever lineups, probably 5% of those are double-ups. So I'll end up in five, six, seven, eight double-ups. Um, and McCaffrey's a guy that I lock in as a guy that I play in a double-up, period. Um, I don't... I don't, I don't want to pay 10-5 for him in a GPP because then I am having to hit on some on some bullshit for me yeah, to, be able to, to win. Yeah, I'm on Kareem Hunt this week if you're going to put him in your lineup. Yeah, pretty much. You you really have to you have to play a Kareem Hunt. You have to play a OJ Howard. You have to play Albert Wilson to mm-hmm. be able to do other things. So so I don't have a problem with him so much in in a cash game. Um, head-to-head and that kind of stuff. But GPP, I personally just stay away because you'd have to get so lucky to hit on all of them. Whereas, you know, playing head-to-head or, or whatnot or, you know, even just in a 50-50, you know, you should get enough points from McCaffrey that you can kind of piss away maybe your tight end, maybe piss away and just take a bottom feeder defense because they're, they're so random sometimes with what they score. Um, but, yeah, I could never, ever, ever argue with anyone saying they're going to put McCaffrey in their lineup. I mean, the, the dude's is – he's as solid as it gets, man. So I, I would never say no. Um, but I prefer him more in in the the double-ups and the head-to-heads and stuff. So, all right, Pat. Well, hey, man, it was cool talking some shit with you. Um, we'll see how things go uh, with us for week 10. And um, hopefully we don't look stupid next week when we come back and, and talk about what we what we did, man. I totally agree, and it wasn't as hard staring at your pretty face for the wait, last time. What, what wasn't as hard? Are we talking about above the camera or below the camera? Oh, uh, the cross shot that I got for most of the game. Oh, okay, gotcha. <laughs> All right. I just yeah. wanted to make sure. I, I was going to say, I think I look pretty good, so it must be. I, you know, for four years you stared at my.